on the next lifestyle magazine there are herbs that naturally make you feel better but there are herbs in combination with other herbs that naturally make you sick this is hello channel more people than ever before are turning to the healing found in nature's nutrients and many are achieving success with herbal remedies but with so many herbs available people need to practice caution in their choices because not only can herbs heal but they also may do great harm today Clifton Davis and Tammy McGrew will talk to experts about using herbs wisely and we'll meet two people whose response to using herbs is truly amazing I'm Dan Matthews and you're watching Lifestyle Magazine <laughs> to have with us today Amanda McQuaid Crawford. Now she is the author of Herbal Remedies for Women and the Herbal Menopause Book. She's also president of the American College of Integrative Medicine in Albuquerque. Welcome Amanda. Thank you very much. Herbs and women. Do herbs react differently with men and women? I don't know that they react differently in men than they do with women, but there are herbs that we have known about for many, many years that are specific for some of the problems that women typically have. And there are other herbs that would be very useful for the, t the kinds of things that men might experience in their lives. However, men and women have the same basic human biology, and so some of the herbs that are called women's herbs will be useful in men, but they'll have different effects. Now, because we integrative all medicine, does that mean that you're a practitioner uh, as a physician, normal physician, and using holistic, uh, holistic treatment? It's a good question. Integrative medicine suggests that we are integrating the best of all possible worlds. Now, we understand that there are problems with conventional medicine, and there are also problems with, uh, with holistic medicine. There needs to be a bridging so that we can have the best of both worlds, so that when somebody has an issue, somebody's health is challenged in some way, that we choose exactly what is going to bring healing to them without giving too much, without overdoing surgery or drugs, and without overdoing uh, herbal remedies and supplements Amanda, of that what kind. what is an herbalist? An herbalist is someone who understands plants and their effects in the body. Because there are so many different definitions of herbalist, it could mean somebody who gardens and is deeply in tune with nature. It could be a biochemist in a lab who's extracting the active constituents from a plant and synthesizing them or purifying them so that we have standardized extracts that can be used in hospital settings. Now, when I go to buy a book, I, I decide I'm going to take echinacea for my cold. Yes. And I go to buy a book, and the, the shelf is packed with them, everybody claiming to be an expert on, on herbs. I've kind of just decided to wash my hands of all of it. <laughs> and, and then on top of it, you go, and there's 25 million manufacturers for these, and you don't know what's out of somebody's backyard and what's really done well. How am I supposed to know that I can trust you or what book I can trust? It's a very good question. It's baffling out there, isn't it? Yes. It's difficult for consumers because there is such a tremendous market. There's so much money being made that you have companies who are putting a lot of money into advertising, very slick packaging, and you don't, as a consumer, always have the controls over what it is that you're buying off the shelf. Now, who do you trust? That question really is a difficult one to answer as well. We're really looking for companies that have some kind of longevity, that have quality control, that have pharmacists on their staff that are able to provide documentation about the safety of their herbs mm -hmm. and about the, the validity of what's in fact inside the, the bottle. So you believe that herbs, they do make a difference. They should oh, be used. absolutely. Herbs should be used. But there's a point to using herbs wisely rather than using them in a, a shotgun approach. And here in America, we have a very different kind of atmosphere around the use of herbs than in other parts of the world where there's a little bit more common sense perhaps and not so much advertising that, um, that will sway the public to go and buy St. John's wort for everybody when in fact not everybody will do well okay, on St. John's wort. Okay, I'm getting a hot wort. flash and I'm hitting mental pause. <laughs> now what, 
What mental do I, pause? Mental pause, yes. Mental, mental pause. pause. Uh -huh. What do I do? Do I run to you or do I go to my OBGYN doc? And what do I do? It's a very good question. You know, there are doctors who are interested in learning about natural remedies, supplements, vitamins, and herbs. And there are also herbalists like myself who work with uh, conventional medical people so that you can get the best possible so you care. Do them together. If you are not happy with the advice you've gotten from any health care provider, it's really wise to shop around and to find somebody who listens to you and who also gives you something that does in fact work and seems to have the kind of credentials that would allow you to place some reasonable trust in their advice. Now, Tammy, you know, in America, <laughs> we don't have the same kind of uh, restraints on putting herbs in a bottle and mm -mm. selling them that some other places may. And that's been a question. Uh, perhaps we're going to, we can touch on it right now. We've got a minute. What about that? We don't have the same restrictions uh, per the FDA right. for herbs that we do for chemically created uh, uh, medications. Well, it's a difficult thing. There are some restraints, and many of the good manufacturers follow what's called good manufacturing practice. There are voluntary organizations of some of the more reputable herb companies so that they can decide about policing themselves and agreeing on standards of ethics in the industry. But certainly there isn't any law forcing a new herb manufacturer that pops up down the street to join that organization and abide by those kinds of guidelines. So I could grow some stuff in the backyard. No, you cannot grow stuff in the backyard. Well, sure, I could grow it in the backyard. I could package it up. I mean, if I saw some results with it, I mean, my mother used to pick leaves off the sassafras tree and make tea, <laughs> and it had, you know, some benefit. Mm. Uh, coming up, one of America's leading experts on herbs talks about the potential dangers of some herbs. Don't go away. Looking for a brighter future? Learn English and make it happen on Hello Channel. Dr. Logan Chamberlain is a radio talk show host and author of What the Labels Won't Tell You, A Consumer Guide to Herbal Supplements. Thanks for being here, Dr. Chamberlain. Thank We're you. talking about herbs, and we hear so much these days. St. John's wort, echinacea. What do the labels not tell you? That's probably the most important thing is what they don't tell you, because they've been restricted very tightly by the FDA in what they can say and what kind of claims they can make on the label. Now, I've, got a, I've got to bump in there. Because, I did okay. too because she said they weren't very heard, well regulated. I heard that they're not very, very well, well regulated. regulated at the FDA. Well, the herbs themselves are not regulated, but what they can say on the bottle is. Isn't so that they can make anything, but they don't. Sure, you can cut up grass in your backyard and put it in a pill, just like you were talking about before, and you can sell it as chlorophyll, for example. See, but that's what I think they're all doing, so that's why I don't buy them. Well, they're not. You know, there are some really good, legitimate products so, out there. So how do you figure out who's a good company? That's the hard part, and that's really why I wrote this book. Is that in know? this book? Yes. Who are you? So you're recommending I actually companies? have a list of companies in there that I recommend, and I think that they're very good. I've, I've actually visited their manufacturing okay. facilities, looked at their quality control processes, okay. looked at how they manufacture, package, and, you know, they quarantine. They, they take and put batch uh, numbers on there. The reason I wrote the book, to be honest with you, is because I had the same kind of problems you have right now, the same confusion. I went to the health food store because I'd heard about herbs. I'd been taking herbs, but I made them myself. Mm -hmm. So I could trust what I made myself, and I knew what I was taking. So I went out there to get echinacea, and I went in there, and there were seven or eight yes. different brands of echinacea, and there were three or four different types of ways and you could take them. And then they add them. it to golden seal. Oh, yeah, think, well, golden seal. that's better because yeah. it's got golden seal in it. But it's but really not. But don't you get into <laughs> that same problem again, Tammy, where you don't know what chemical <laughs> elements, what constituent parts of this thing right. could conflict with the other herb you're taking. So right. in taking two of opposing herbs, you could cause yourself problems. There is a possibility of that. You know, there's, there were some diet products that were on the market that were very dangerous. And they were used in uh, really inappropriate ways by teenagers, and they, they took them, and, you know, there were some major problems from doing that. Uh, the use of ephedra with caffeine mixed together in large quantities, you know, it's very dangerous. You can't even buy dangerous. Sudafed now. It, they've taken it all they've off They've taken the it off, right. You have to go get it. That's true. So I want to know what herbs you take, and I want to know what okay. you take. Well, every morning I take some, uh, I take some echinacea. Every morning? Not every morning. I take echinacea, though, in the cold and flu season. Okay. Just to stimulate my immune system. I take saw palmetto, which is a men's herb, and I take a, a standardized extract of saw palmetto with nettle root in it. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want prostate problems. I'm 
using that to prevent and be well and be healthy. Is that what the saw palmetto That's what saw palmetto is? does for men. Okay. There's wonderful uh, studies out there, medical research on it, that's proven to be superior to any uh, prescription drug that you can take. Is it dealing with? Uh, dealing with a, a prostate problem like uh, benign prostate hyperplasia, for example, which is just a swelling of the prostate. Mm -hmm. So would you, either of you, do you recommend herbs before regular medicine? Depends on the problem, to, depends on the condition. Depends on say? the person, absolutely. Right. Well, give me an example of a person or a problem. Well, that, if, um, I have, um, if I have a parent whose child has had recurrent ear infections and they're reluctant to have a course of antibiotics and they are interested in alternatives, we can look at changing that child's diet in decreasing the kinds of uh, mucus or catarrh production, increasing that child's natural immunity so that there is less of a need for the antibiotics. And that's not replacing medicine, that's actually increasing wellness. And in relationship to your other question about uh, how herbs might be used, whether they're instead of medicine or before medicine, it's really a matter of looking at the individual and seeing what is appropriate. There isn't anything to say that something natural that grows out of the ground is better or superior than something that has been uh, synthesized in a lab. Yeah, We're looking right. at what is most appropriate. Quickly, we've that heard a lot about well broccoli and how that has been the elements of broccoli. Have... George Bush liked that a lot. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I love broccoli. I mean, it's delicious. With ranch dressing. Well, either, you know, that's raw, yeah, you know, it's gotta have I ranch. like it cooked. Right. Okay. You can put melted cheese on top of it. <laughs> yeah, then me. it's good. Unless you're against dairy products. But I understand it has anti-carcinogen products. Yeah. Maybe we can, we can get into that. Uh, when we come back, one man's truly amazing story about how herbs may have saved his life and a woman who used herbs to heal infections. Hello. 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 Welcome back. We're talking about how herbs can make us well. Three years ago, Roby Klein was diagnosed with hepatitis C and was not expected to live very long. Roby, how did you come to uh, find out about it? Well, basically, I was very extremely fatigued and tired, couldn't hardly get through the day. Um, I had uh, water gain or ascites throughout the body. Um, my mental uh, disorientation was extreme, uh, couldn't so work. So you went to an herbalist? I was a mutual friend of ours. Uh, when I say a mutual friend, a mutual friend of uh, Amanda's mm -hmm. uh, referred me to her, and at first I balked at it. Yes, just, if somebody said, I know a good herbalist and you're really sick, I'd say thank you very much. Or, or, or <laughs> perhaps your primary care physician recommended alternative medicine. No. Not Is that likely. The way? No way. <laughs> no, actually, they referred me to UCLA. Uh, which is an excellent Did you facility. tell your primary care physician you were going to go to an herbalist? Yes, I did. And what did that physician say? They go said, for go it. Ahead, try You're going to die anyway, right? Well, they didn't say I was going <laughs> to die. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that minute. Hey, there's no hope. <laughs> <laughs> there's no hope. Go to an herbalist. I am really, really glad he's alive sitting here, okay? Yeah, I know. No, I, but uh, I mean, I've seen doctors do that. They go, you know, there's, there's nothing we can do for you, so fine, go to an herbalist. What can it hurt? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I went to Amanda, uh, and immediately, it was a, probably within two weeks, uh, I was off of the, uh, the Lasix, which is the diuretics, right. mm -hmm. taking natural diuretics, dandelion root. Can I ask Amanda, why would, why would it be better to do a natural diuretic than a, a, a Lasix? Because, I mean, Lasix works. Yeah. That's right. Well, so does dandelion leaf. One of the things about that particular diuretic that we use with Roby is that it's rich in potassium, and diuretics are very notorious you for right. stripping potassium. you of potassium, which you really need for right. electrolyte balance. And so by using a dandelion leaf extract, we not only had the diuretic effect very safely, but we were also having a net gain of now, healthy potassium. Now, why would a physician not do this? Well, there's quite a lot of information of about dandelion leaf, but it's such a humble plant, and truly, it takes so many millions of dollars to patent a drug. They're not likely to take dandelion leaf and invest millions of dollars. Why would they not do that if it's Most people try to kill dandelions in their yard. Right, you know? which is very sad. 
So there isn't really the recoupment. You can't get your investment back. So they're not going to make money. Plant. Correct. Is that the deal? Yes, they're that's not going to make it's money. It's economics. That's right. It's mm -hmm. economics. Yeah. That's Roby, right. plus training and education. Yeah. Roby, I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to go a little further with this, this healing. Um, we've got about one minute. What did you see uh, as a change in mm. you as a result of taking uh, uh, herbs? Well, obviously, right away, I felt a much more positive attitude about uh, being able to live a little bit longer and and uh, and have a uh, a life that was meaningful. I have two young kids, and I thought that was very important at the time. Now, after taking the herbs, did you go back to your primary oh, care absolutely. physician and have him re-examine you absolutely. and give you a different prognosis? And what was his word? Well, basically, uh, you know, I'm still on the liver transplant list at UCLA, but it seems that I'm a little bit early. Uh, my uh, counts, my blood counts, liver counts are down. Uh, two of them are ba basically in a normal area. Hmm. I've got problems Is he still. Impressed? It's hard to impress a doctor. Well, I'm <laughs> impressed. I'm yeah. extremely yeah. impressed. That's, that's fabulous. Next, a woman who's used herbs successfully for 13 years. In fact, herbs help heal a leg wound. Hello. 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 Trudy Huberman initially saw Amanda McQuaid Crawford for a leg wound. Why would you go? to an herbalist or a practitioner for a leg wound? Well, I originally had had a surgery to repair some damage to my leg from a skiing injury. And the supposed slam dunk procedure turned into a nightmare because I continued to have an infection on my leg. I was exasperated, and I had been involved with herbs for a long time and was referred to Amanda, mostly because I no longer trusted my physician. Well, now. Was that where they made an incision? It, it was uh, an never healed properly because it was infected? That's really correct. Invasive? That's correct. After a couple of weeks, it, it really should have healed, and I should have just been going through physical therapy. Yes. But things got very complicated, and my doctor just kept looking at me and saying, don't worry, this is not that unusual, and you don't have that much body fat, and don't be concerned about it. And I knew that something was not right. Now, when you, take, when you treat, Amanda, something like this, so are we using topical herbs, not just herbs that we're taking orally to treat Both. something? It Both. Was, it was a combination. So, so, so herbs are not outside. just to take orally. They are to use topically, topically well. also. Oh, yeah. They've been doing that for years. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, the I'm old right folks is... Poultice. Put a little poultice on it. If you got a sole back here, I was going to put a little, put some of this on you. Ooh, that's mud, but suddenly you well. Well, tell in us fact, about that. What's the practical what reality did? of yes. that? Yes. yes, she says that's what she did. That's exactly what she ended up doing. Well, um, what happened was she's not an old there was an area that was simply was not healing that the doctor could not figure out why it wasn't healing. Oh, Amanda good. and I both felt instinctively that there was something inside of the leg that was trying to find its way to the surface. As it turned out, through the fact that she was using a poultice on me and trying to get draw the area out. to open up and to draw out, mm -hmm. combined with the fact that she was giving me herbs so that my immune system was boosted because I was absolutely dealing with an infection that could have gone to my bone. Something we, came out? Yes, it was a stitch because I was allergic oh. to the stitching material that they that? did. Yes. Well. And yeah. they kept telling me that it was nothing, and Amanda knew that there was something in there that was trying to and find its way out. And the herbs brought a stitch out? Absolutely. That's a pretty powerful herb. What was that herb? It was a combination of uh, calendula, and uh, we used several things uh, at different times. Mm -hmm. But we were mainly preventing infection, and we were wanting to improve the, the, yep. the body's ability to expel material without causing more inflammation and damage. Now, this calendula, this is what they just were going to give us yeah, the hand lotion on. Yeah, but fact, why would you use that if right you now. don't have a wound? Is that good for something like that, too? It's actually a very good herb for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chamberlain can speak more about calendula. Well, I love calendula. In fact, my wife puts calendula on her face every night. Is it, it a, is this a lotion? It's a, the type she uses is a cream. Okay. And it, it, uh, it not only does it smooth the skin and make it more supple, but also it can fight infections. And Do you think that they're... It's a wonderful herb. Yes. Uh, I'm going to need a little calendula for my hands in just a <laughs> moment. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with some last words. <laughs>
Hello! The job market is a competitive place. In today's economy, extra skills mean a better job for you. Speaking English is the skill you need for greater opportunity, more money, and a brighter future. Introducing Hello Channel, an exciting new television channel that teaches English as you watch TV. There's something for everyone, and the more you watch, the faster you'll learn. All you have to do is say hello. Um, amazing information, fascinating. Um, a book here by Dr. Logan Chamberlain. We believe you. Great information. But we're in a world of lots of skepticism. What can we do to change that? I think we're going to really have to examine the information that the free press puts out there. They often report a lot of negative information and just balance that out because there is no doubt that the scientific research proves that herbs work. And then we had some wonderful stories today that prove that as well. Yeah, Roby's story is fabulous. And, and you even made lifestyle changes. Yes, I became a vegetarian uh, and also try to re reduce the stress that I have in my life and uh, try to love more. And uh, all those things really have helped. Well, then, Amanda, this is really a holistic program that we're talking about here. Thank you all very much for being with us. Enjoyed the program. Thank you for joining us as well. We'll be here on Lifestyle Magazine next time. We invite you back. Bye now.